Hello, my name is Frank Epigesi, Doctor of Optometry. I'm going to share with you today some of my thoughts on presbyopia. Uh, and just in case you're sort of not familiar with the, that term, it's the um, long-sightedness which happens to a lot of people in their middle years. Um, even people that have never had glasses in the past suddenly find they can't see so well close up, particularly with reading. Um, and this is because of the um, inflexibility which occurs in the crystalline lens um, over um, a period of time um, and, sh and manifests itself in the in the middle years. So somewhere between sort of 40 and 50, although it may occur in a few people earlier than that. So as an eye specialist, I've recommended um, glasses for people with presbyopia, for hundreds and hundreds of people, probably thousands of people. Uh, and as a person that's gone through my middle years, um, I've, I've had first-hand experience um, of, uh, of dealing with uh, and being treated for um, presbyopia. You can see I have some uh, reading glasses on. Um, but that wasn't always the case. Um, for many years before I decided to have reading glasses, even though I was an eye specialist, I used to uh, rely on the length of my arms to hold things further away. Um, I, I simply wasn't interested in wearing reading glasses because they changed the way I look, because I was probably in denial of the age I was at. Um, and I just, you know, I, I thought I'd lose them. It was just an extra thing to have around. Um, so I made use of the length of my arms. I'm quite tall um, and I've got long arms, so I could hold things further and further away until I got to the point um, where I was holding things so far away I couldn't see them because they were too small. I also used to rely on, um, on on trying to get into an area where there was good light. So, for example, when I was out at a restaurant um, and I was trying to read the menu, um, I'd try and get into a position where there was some better lighting. Uh, and if I couldn't get um, better lighting, then I'd rely on someone that was with me, hopefully, to, to read the menu for me. And I remember one particular embarrassing situation where neither of us could read the menu in this uh, in this lovely restaurant, and we had to ask the the, the 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 waiting person to read read the menu for us, which was which was a little bit um, embarrassing. Um, another technique that I I used um, was um, um, to have things on my on my tablet and then to use the enlargement system, you know, the pinch out system on the screen to make things bigger. Because um, of course, you know, making things bigger doesn't make things clearer, but it makes them bigger, and it's easier for your visual system to you know, work out what a, a large blurry letter is uh, than trying to work out what a small blurry letter is. So that was another technique that I used. Um, and other people use the, an, an avoidance technique where they, they, they can't read because they're presbyopic and they don't have any glasses. So they just avoid reading, they don't do any reading. And, and simply by doing that, they avoid the problems called avoidance strategy. Um, however, you know, I realised after a while that I was really struggling and had these uh, wonderful um, reading glasses made and boy what a difference it made. And I wished, I uh, still wish, that I hadn't spent all those years um, in denial about my presbyopia. I, I had my first glasses when I was 54 and I probably should have had them when I was 44. Um, so I, I spent 10 years without glasses um, using some of those strategies I've described when really just a, a simple pair of reading glasses would have would have would have helped me. And now, of course, there are all sorts of modern lenses that one can have. Um, office uh, varifocals uh, come to my mind where um, the distance part of the lens is not set for distance. It's set for the computer screen um, and there's the intermediate part, perhaps for the keyboard and then um, a reading part for um, uh, closer documents perhaps and there's a whole different range of these office progressive lenses I would encourage you to have a look um, at those types of lenses and um, think about recommending them for your patients and even before we get into the middle years some people in their mid to late 30s are starting to struggle a little bit with close vision uh, and for them companies have developed um, uh, what I call it or what are called enhanced distance lenses where there's a very low power uh, in the in the lower portion of the lens um, there's two types that I've come across a lens with a 0.4 diopter reading ad 
Um, although the manufacturers prefer not to refer them to them as reading ads, it's, this is an enhanced distance lens with 0.4 of a diopter power for clo close work. And then there's another lens with 0.8 diopters of power. They call this a boosted um, lens. So, you know, wh whatever way you decide to go with your patients, just remember that many of them will be struggling, um, your presbyopic patients, many of them will be looking for your advice. So let them know that there's a good alternative other than relying on long arms, better lighting, somebody else reading it for them or not reading at all, that there are some very modern advanced lenses um, that can help them a great deal. Uh, and at the end of the day, it will be a great boost to their quality of life. So just a short presentation, but thank you very much for listening uh, and all the best with your work and all the best with your patients. Thanks very much. Bye-bye for now.